Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Rayhan, and now we're listening to Code Gas. So in this episode, we have another special guest. Uh, his uh, we have the same common patients is sharing knowledge and technical writing. So uh, and his distance is really really far from my place. Uh, and without any further ado. Let's welcome, please welcome to Chidra Humphrey. Hello, Chidra. How are you? I'm fine. I'm doing good. How are you? Good, 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 good. Nice. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming in here. So maybe uh, you can introduce us to uh, our friends out there. Okay, okay. Thank you for having me. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say my name. My name is um, Chidara Humphrey. Um, I'm a React developer and also a technical writer. I, I reside here in Nigeria and you can find me on LinkedIn at um, Chidara Humphrey. Yes, so yeah, uh, his name is Chidara Humphrey and we have uh, we in the same group in the technical writings it is academic at stack academic so yeah so how 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 did you end up you know in the first place uh to reason your reason to you know starting to writing about technical about programming how did you end up with this with writing yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I was I was programming, but you know how to keep my knowledge, how to write things down. I write like some kind of articles and posts and keep it on my phone or on my laptop for easy aspects. So when I heard about um, developer blogs and publications, I, I decided to apply to Stack Media, JavaScript in plain English, and Free Code Camp where I can share my knowledge with people and also reinforce my knowledge. So that was how I was able to get into technical writing. Yeah, nice. I mean, like, we have the same publications, the academic, right, in Medium. So uh, I've seen yes. his uh, writings and articles. It's really, really great about the React and etc. So how, how did you, uh, what's your first story? Uh, about being a programmer you know how did you uh and in programming field study or... okay yeah okay how i entered in the programming field yeah, yeah uh it was it was kind of complicated first of all i wanted to go into cryptocurrencies yeah. and i had to learn the the person i met had told me how to learn blockchain ah. so when i Dive to blockchain. I saw that it was all about programming. So from there, I had to learn programming languages. The first one I learned was Python, but it was really hard for me then because I was just like all over the place. I wasn't doing, I wasn't following the basics. Of, I wasn't following a good uh, roadmap. I was just like all over the place. So I, so during my second second semester of my second year at university, I decided to go into front end development to like take a step back and understand this whole programming stuff. And ever since then, I've not looked back. Yeah. Oh, so you're just starting from blockchain, right? Learning about blockchain, and then you, uh, and then you like interest to programming, something like that. <laughs> uh, even the blockchain itself, I, 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 I was just double into the blockchain. I don't, I know not about blockchain for now, but I, I guess, I guess, like with time, I was still like know about that next time. Uh, so, uh, I mean, do you have like? advice for people like who want to learn about programming do you think like also write things and sharing to the others it's also has uh, helpful for the others what do you think about that yeah so can you come again yeah like you know like uh sharing is caring you know like when you write yeah. things about uh, something sometimes maybe people want to you know like uh want to search about 
that thing. So, uh, what do you think about uh, about the developer should uh, write things about articles or their blogs? Okay, first of all, I'll, um, writing is they say writing is about passion, but I don't think writing is only about passion. Writing is a form of communication that humans have used for time immemorial before computers and phones and tablets and stuff. So I really think that writing as a developer is a good avenue, both for making money and for getting your word out and for helping others. Yes, because at the end, most of the um, hard problems I had to solve in programming, I used blogs to solve them, not tutorial videos. But tutorial videos are really hard to like and sift through and get to the point that you want. And so as a as a developer, writing writing and articles is. It's a very good avenue. You can help other people get your get yourself known. Yes, exactly. Because you know the beginning is the the hard one. The part the beginning is the hard one. So when when you already like break that pass in the beginning, uh, when you like to write things, then it can be you know like a useful thing for you to write things to do something for. It also can help others, right? Yes, exactly. So, uh, do you have like uh, your milestones or your your next achievements you want to to do in the future? Oh, you give me milestones in terms of uh, technical rights or in terms of um, front end development. Okay, nice, nice. So maybe uh, you can build your own course. Maybe you can create in Udemy. How about how about that? Thing? I I I have a I have a, I have a, I have a target of creating course to help people, but that will be after that will oh, be yeah. later. Maybe when I yeah. So, so how about you know? Uh, yeah yeah. So uh, do you like have message or advice for uh, people who want to learn about programming? Okay, first of all, I would say you should know why you want to program. Do you want to be a web developer, a software developer, an embedded system developer, or AI developer? When you get, get that goal down, and when you're choosing your goal, don't choose because of trendiness, because uh, trends come and go. You know, some trends come and go. I see people that, that say about web development, that web development is dead, it's not, uh, we are not software developers and stuff, but Nowadays, if, there, if you have a business, especially an international business, and you don't have a website, it's just like, it's almost like as if the business is a scam. I don't know if you understand, it's almost like as if the business is a scam. So if I wouldn't say you should go into web development, I wouldn't say you should go into this one or this one. It's just knowing what resonates what you want. So when you, if you like, let's say you've chosen web development, then you should like choose the right language for the job. Uh, although every programming language can be used to develop any kind of application, but some are better than others in some aspects. For instance, if I want to build desktop applications from start, I'm not going. I'm, I don't know JavaScript, but I'm not going to use um, JavaScript now because it won't like give me the results that I want. I'll go for maybe C plus plus, Java, C sharp. You understand? So let us say that I want to go for web development. I want to become a backend engineer. I advise you go maybe go for Python or PHP. I know a lot of people are saying that PHP is dead, but PHP is a server side language built for the web. <laughs> I don't know if it's, it's a server side language built for the web. Yeah. When it comes to web development, PHP is good for server side um, stuff and server side rendering. After all, Drupal and WordPress, they're also using PHP. So if you don't develop custom PHP websites, you can also use um, develop WordPress and Drupal websites. You understand? So if that's the part you want to take, that those are the tech stack I advise you. Then if maybe you want to become a software engineer and you want to build systems that maybe Microsoft, Google or Apple use, I would suggest you go for something like C C sharp and Java. These are enterprise languages that these big enterprises, these big companies use. I don't know if you understand. So if you want to go for embedded systems or AI, then maybe you can go for Python or R. These are good uh, languages for those kind of tasks. You know, so it only depends on, it largely depends on what you want to achieve. So when you've gotten down your what your goal, your language, another thing to get down is your roadmap. You can take 
a course, uh, maybe from Free Code Camp or Code Academy or Scrimba or any of these free courses, or you can go to uh, Udemy. But what I, what I want to pick out there is for you to stay consistent with the roadmap you've taken. Being all over the place, like taking from this one, taking from this one, how you had that um, form map, uh, map is the best um, uh, array method to use. You jump into that one. No, you have to like have a roadmap of something. And each, you should be building projects at each stage. At each stage of what you're learning, you should build projects. Like for instance, if you learn HTML, CSS, build, build products, build um, projects with those text stack, you understand? So you can like certify your learning and other things. Don't just breeze through the tutorial and it's not going to do any good. It's like building projects. And further, you, 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 you get that from tutorial help. But if you keep on watching projects upon pro, um, tutorials upon tutorials upon tutorials, you'll be stuck in tutorial help. Well, if you look at your, your screen will be black, you don't know what to build or, uh, or stuff like that. So it's, it's focusing on your part. When you're, when you're done with that part, when you're done with that course, at least do some projects, some projects. Apart from your coursework, let me because most courses will give you projects to do and kind of like give you like a guideline. And this is not really what you see in, in the real world, whether it's freelancing or or in or in traditional tech job. You'll be doing things out of the box. So I, I advise after your coursework that you should go back, take the concepts you learned, and then maybe use it to like build some projects. So that will solve a real world a real world problem. It doesn't have to be the next Facebook, the next uh the next Instagram, WhatsApp, uh, it doesn't have to be that. You know, so I'm, I'm not even, I'm not even a, a fan of um, building um, clones. You know, what I'm because everybody knows about clones and how they, uh, have, yeah. everybody knows how Twitter works, how YouTube works, and stuff like that. So I think about building unique projects. Maybe you're having problem in your know, life. Like there was a time I was having problem about getting um, the crypto exchange rate in my in my currency, in my my local currency, the naira. So I built an application that can help me to check major currencies that I was tracking in Naira. You understand? So although it was a simple project, but it was something that gave me that gave me hope, that gave me that excitement. So that's that's the kind of so when you're done with all this, I think you'll be good for stuff there. Maybe you can still go out for to then build your LinkedIn and stuff like that. But that was for another discussion. Yes, exactly. The first thing you need to do is decide first you want to be like uh, the web developer uh, like uh, mobile developer or the AI developer and there's so many tools that can help also right now like chat GPT so many AI yeah. tools that can help us to boost our our you know our improvement to learn the programming itself and I agree with you that uh, when you learn something, you need to imagine, to image, uh, to imagine something that you can create to build your own product, like build something like a real, a real product. Like you can do like cloning, clone project, like clone YouTube, clone Instagram, or clone Facebook, something like that. So yeah, you have to also imagine the product that you want to build, it's like. Uh, like you want to build a startup or something like that then make it uh, to the real project and then uh, you know like uh, implement that that you learn from the programming implement to the imagination yes so uh, yeah, right. yeah yeah right so what do you think about the other tools that can help uh, programmer to learn and also write things their 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 uh, blogs or articles to share to the others itself okay when it comes to let us let us let us start with technical writing when it comes to writing i always tell people to read the kind of writing that you want to write for example as a some technical writers write um, uh, what they call it, the readme documents of, of applications, some write technical blog posts, and some write um, web copy. So if you want to write technical blog posts, inside that technical blog post, maybe you want to write about tutorials and maybe comparisons, you should read more of those kind of blogs so you can get an idea of how it is written and what works and what doesn't. 
work. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. What works and what doesn't work. So, uh, so it is with programming. If you want to get good at programming, let's say you want to build blogs and you want to be building landing pages, you should watch tutorials or maybe read about those kind of specific projects that you want to work on. So you get a feel of how it is done, how efficient you can be. And uh, from, for tools that can help you, I think, uh, like you said, ChatGPT, it can help you, but I will really advise you lean on too much on ChatGPT. You should come up with something on your own first. Come up with something on your own first. And also, it's, um, Stack Overflow. Like people will say that Stack Overflow is dead. Stack Overflow is not dead. You have, you have to learn how to ask good questions to get good answers from Stack Overflow. And, and these are the kind of skills that help you on the job. I like ChatGPT. ChatGPT, when you make some kind of mistake, to assume what you are trying to ask and to give you answers based on what it assumed. But on Stack Overflow, if you don't make a good answer, good question, people won't give you good answers. So that is just the thing. If you learn how to ask, use Stack Overflow and maybe learn how to connect with other developers and learn how to ask good questions. And for technical writing, you can also use ChatGPT. I have heard of Jasper AI. You can use Grammarly. Uh, Grammarly is very good at least to like reward your Yes. At least to reward your your sentences and make them engaging and stuff. But I would not really advise you you write too much on it because to change your voice and you and you sound more like a robot, and which you don't want because people want to actually connect with humans. You don't want to connect with robots. You should give your your text, your write up that kind of human touch, that kind of human feeling. So in my technical writing, these are the tools that I use. I use ChatGPT sometimes, especially to explain some code snippets that like, I can reward for my audience. I use Grammarly to like retype my reward my sentences to make it to make it more clearer. I, I, to make it more clearer, I answer. And these are the tools that I use. Apart from that, I normally write with my own because I feel like I have to like the way, the way, the way I solve the problem. That's how I write it, and I know that many people have that problem the same way. Yeah, so many great, uh, you know, automation like artificial intelligence or the AI tools that really have us a lot. Uh, like, uh, example is like Grammarly uh, that you use the mention earlier. Yeah. It's really helpful. It's really helpful, you know, when you it corrects the sentence when you write things. It also uh, help us to make good uh, sentence or make good statement uh, about the story that we want to uh, writing in our articles or our blog right and yeah the first one is like learning you know learn uh, pro tutorials or something and the 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 thing that we should care is about uh, we should see is get in touch in community right in community like yeah. uh, when you had problems get in touch with community uh javascript uh group like javascript developer group or something like that yeah so uh, get in touch in community is also uh, the important one right yeah, yeah. that is very important very important to get in touch with people and understand what's exactly. going on in the whole industry exactly so how how's the community in your country in Nigeria? So how is the so how's the the community in Nigeria? Is that really uh, you know like so much community or uh, less community? So many community. Okay, in Nigeria. Okay, kind of the community state in Nigeria. Yeah. Ah, in Nigeria, in SFS, in my school, there are some communities that tend to take related stuff. We have like blockchain community, and there's one I'm trying to start up with some of my uh, fellow ambassadors. It's a tech community for the state of the school. I mean. So we are trying to like recruit people and like teach them about tech and stuff and get them into tech and see what tech can do for them. Because I'll tell you the truth, in my economy in my in my country, we are not really dependent on 
government for the economy and we're not really depending on the economy for jobs and stuff like that so tech is kind of like a leeway out exactly. so i'm trying to share the knowledge to people like build this community around people where people can come and learn and whenever they are confused can give their questions and people that are in, into the field will like answer them so we are i'm looking at build for uh, this month and next month runs out out of um gather some plan we have done some events so in my in nigeria we have, we have, we have our tech community is coming up it's not that large as that as that in india or usa or all these uh, tech hub places here yeah, but we are we are going we are making progress i see we are making very good progress yeah that's nice exactly same as like in indonesia we also like uh so many like communities right now in indonesia uh you know like java ship indonesia so many so many communities that progressing yeah that's really great to talk with you uh so this we already <laughs> maybe we can meet in the next episode okay uh, thanks for having me yeah thank you for joining this episode uh chidra humphrey so i think because our time is limit so uh yeah thank you for listening everyone so see you in the next episode have a good day salam and peace bye bye thank you okay thank you bye